All right, just to let everyone know, we are recording this. So if someone misses it, um, we're going to have that recording for everyone. Um, just so everyone knows that we are uh, recording this as well. So you are being recorded uh, in this meeting. Um, so yeah, all right, cool. It is two o'clock, so let's go ahead and start. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Isaac Poole. Uh, I'm an OIT services professional. Um, I run the bikes. Um, I am the amazing host. Um, can't say I'm as great as the other hosts who have hosted things on TV, but I can always try. So today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about what is life after UCCS like. We've got a whole host of awesome people here. So in order, here's what we're going to do. So in order, we're going to uh, do the Office of the Registrar. So that's going to be Robin Firth. Um, and then from Alumni Relations, we're going to have Joanna Bean. And then uh, from the T. Rowe Price Career Center, we're going to have Kenner. And from Human Resources, we're going to have Nancy Mullers. So if anyone has any questions for those groups, we're gonna open up questions um, at the end for each of them. So they do have small speaking time slots. So we want to make sure that those questions are at the end. Um, if you are feeling enterprising, please feel free to leave questions in the chat and then I can sort of help moderate those. So um, without uh, further ado, uh, I don't wanna take up too much of everyone's time. I want to, you know, I'm not the main event here, everyone else is. so. Uh, let's go ahead and let's have the Office of the Registrar go first. Uh, we're going to call Robin first, and Alumni Relations, Joanna Bean, is on deck. So without further ado, oh, we also have Tracy Barber. Awesome. All right, sweet. Sorry, I almost missed you there. All right, yeah, thanks, we are Isaac. good to go. Thank you. Thank so you. I was just about to say, and we also have Tracy with us, which is wonderful, um, because obviously having the registrar here to talk about the registrar's office is really nice. Um, but I'll do my best and, and she'll chime in uh, when I haven't thought of something. Um, for any students on the call, because I know this is a pretty broad audience, um, the Office of the Registrar does a lot of different things, um, but the couple that are the most important for you to remember are uh, transcript requesting and applying to graduate. Um, and so for the graduating seniors, it really, how do I get transcripts? What do I do? What, what is a transcript? What does that mean for me? And then also applying to graduate and what does that mean and why is that so important? Um, and so, uh, Tracy, do you want to just give an overall description of the Office of the Registrar before I hop into just the graduation side? Sure. So one other thing I wanted to touch on is as our graduating students are seeking um, employment opportunities, our office also does degree verification. And so if an employer um, maybe is going to waive a transcript request but wants to confirm uh, past enrollment or a degree conferral, they can contact our office as well. Um, office of the Registrar, you've been familiar with us since you first registered for classes. Uh, we create the schedule of classes. We create the catalog in conjunction with the academic units. Um, as Robin said, we um, handle transcript requests, um, drop, add, and just a plethora of other things that nobody else really um, cares about until something is broken, like your portal is not working. Um, so those are the types of things we handle. But yes, um, we do the official uh, transcript requests. It, my big comment about transcripts for everybody graduating is always log into your portal and look at your unofficial transcript first before you make your transcript request because we do not have an opportunity to hold for final grades, nor can we hold for your degree conferral. So you wanna request your unofficial transcript, look at it, confirm all your grades are there, and that your degree has been posted before ordering the official transcript. So that's that's my blurb on transcripts, and I'm going to turn it over to Robin to talk about graduation and diplomas. Yeah, yeah. Um, so applying to graduate is really, really important. Uh, students, uh, but also faculty and staff also, uh, do mix up the term commencement and graduation um, and the actual awarding of the degree. And so two things happen at the end of the term. One is we celebrate the completion of the degree with the commencement ceremony, which is really fun, awesome, yeah. Uh, we handle a lot of things uh, with that process as well. We work really well with the chancellor's office in, in getting commencement to go really well. Um, but that's only half of it. And I will say the least important in terms of the actual degree awarding. Um, and that is where the transcripts come into play. Um, but the most important thing is to remember that you have to apply to graduate and RSVP to commencement if you want to do that. 
applying to graduate is the number one way we know that you're ready to go and that we can do stuff on our side to double check that that is correct. We agree with you. Um, and so the uh, applying to graduate is in your portal, just like you would do to order an official transcript, um, which I also put the link there so that everyone has that to the transcript link and some FAQs and so forth. Um, and so basically students can apply to graduate uh, up to a year in advance, um, but not more than 90 days before the actual event, um, before the, the confer date. So um, at this point, uh, hopefully everyone has applied to graduate that's on this call. Um, but if you have any friends who you, they've never heard of that term, apply to graduate, uh, help them out and send them to their portal. Uh, because as I said, it's really important, especially as Tracy said, we do a lot of reporting to National Student Clearinghouse. And if we don't catch someone, then that reporting is then uh, not as accurate as we want it to be. So we do a lot of uh, in the weeds stuff, uh, Tracy. Yeah, I was just going to jump into if you haven't already applied to graduate, if you're an undergraduate student, make an appointment with your academic advisor today, this afternoon, you need to get in there right away. If you're a graduate student and you haven't done this process yet, contact the graduate school and your graduate advisor um, in your department and let them know that because it's important. So. Yes, uh, we work really closely with the advising office to make sure that students have completed all their requirements. And so we will not award degrees without that, that approval, um, that, that, that they have completed those requirements. So it's really, really important that they meet with that academic advisor or we might not get the right information. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Really, really important. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Does, do you have anything else to say slash are there any questions so yeah, that was the pause. The Sorry about that, Isaac. I was reading to the comment that was made just to make sure that wasn't for us. But um, cool. I think that's pretty much uh, us. Uh, if you have any questions about commencement, there's a whole website about that, but you can find information on our website, although our office doesn't oversee that process. Um, and anything else, um, you can always email us. All of our information is at registrar.uccs.edu. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Um, so next we have Joanna Bean. Hi everybody, I'm Joanna Bean uh, in the Alumni Relations and Annual Giving Office. And I'm just going to mention a few things and then I'm going to drop the website uh, of the Alumni Office and Association in the chat when I'm done talking. So congratulations almost to all of you. As you walk across the stage at commencement or graduate, you, did I get that right Robin? Uh, you automatically become a member of the UCCS Alumni and Friend Association. There are no, no dues or fees for membership. You're automatically a member of the Alumni Association. You're already getting email from our office about things like graduation bash and uh, legacy cords and traditions challenge and that kind of thing. And you'll then transition to continuing to get email from the Alumni Association about events and benefits and other things after you graduate. Uh, our web page does include a link to alumni benefits. I also want to uh, address email. I'm, I'm, I see the question in the chat about email for retirees, so I'm not going to go there, but I can speak about uh, email for students who graduate. You will keep your UCCS email as long as you keep up with the storage requirements and the password changes. So you can't just keep it and just let it sit there. It will eventually uh, IT will take care of it if it just continues to accumulate emails or is not looked at. But you will keep your email if you keep up with it. And as I mentioned, we have a lot of other benefits, including to the rec center, and you, you will have some benefits at the library. Uh, so just know that after you graduate, you don't lose your connection to UCCS, nor do we want you to. We want you to keep in touch and uh, continue to come to alumni uh, events and other activities and Keep up on your email and the website and stay connected to UCCS. Isaac, did I cover pretty much everything you'd hoped I would? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just a pro tip for everyone out there, for all those students out there, your UCCS email can still get you student discounts even after you've graduated. Some websites are going to check on you though. So, uh, so for instance, uh, Spotify, I know for instance, Spotify will actually check and they'll go, no, you're not a student anymore. You're off the roster. So uh, just for all those students who are graduating and have used some of those benefits, just keep in mind that your bills for some of those recurring things might go back up. 
Um, this is just from the tech side, especially from the tech and money side, because I don't want anyone to be like, wait, how come I'm paying $15 a month for Spotify now? So yeah, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, and then uh, uh, pertaining to the email, um, yeah, you, you get to keep that email as long as you like. That is really good for, uh, for your first job. So if you're applying to your first job, go ahead and use that. Don't use, um, you know, snowboard master of doom at gmail.com, you know, like that's cool. Like, you know, if, if I was hiring for that, I'd be like, that's really cool. I want to talk to this person, but not every employer is going to be like that. So using your UCCS email is going to be super professional. So keep, keep on top of that. And then if you have any problems with that email, you get locked out, your password's wrong, your account is compromised. You can always contact the UCCS uh, uh, OIT service desk even after you're a student. So once you're an alumni, still feel free, to, feel free to contact us and we can reset passwords for you. So yeah, that's that's pretty much everything, thank, thank you. So uh, next I've got Kenner um, and we're gonna talk about how to use uh, the T.R. Price Career Center to its maximum potential. And Kenner actually created an amazing one pager which I can hand out to everyone at the end of this um, just based on some of the resources that they've got there. So I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Kenner. Thanks, Isaac. Hi everyone, my name is Kenner. I'm a peer career advisor at the T. Rowe Price Career and Innovation Center. One thing I want to start off with both for staff members as well as soon to be graduates is the UCCS Career Center offers services both for UCCS students as well as UCCS alumni. So even if you graduate now and don't come back until 10 years later, we're still going to help you out with any kind of questions or resources you might need. To start off, our most basic services are going to be resume and cover letter review. So if you're looking to search for a job or maybe you're just not too sure on how to um, start with a new resume, we can help you through that process as well as cover letters. I personally do curriculum vitae critiques. So if you're looking to apply for a higher ed job position or like a laboratory position or even apply to jobs outside of the country, I will help you write a curriculum vitae. We also have mock interviews. So if you are looking to practice your interview skills before a job, you can come to us and I'll do tailored interviews that are tailored towards the position you're interested in or maybe just general ones and give you some tips and tricks on how to improve. We also have our wonderful career and major exploration coach, Brie Escobedo. She works with you in case you're ever curious to know what you can do with your degree. Maybe you're at a job right now that you don't really like and you're ready to make a change and use the degree that you have. Maybe if you're not working in the job that pertains to your degree right now. We also help with students on deciding what major they want to be in. So if you're a student that's undecided and needs some extra support in that decision, you can definitely send them to us here and I'll get you connected with Bree. We also have Sarah Philman, who is our pre-health career coach. So if you are interested in med school, nursing, dentistry, anything pre-health, you can connect with her. She does specific health resumes as well as MCAT strategizing, um, applications to med school. And she has a lot of great connections to different places around the Springs and outside of that for shadowing and internship opportunities. Other than that, we also offer job and internship searching. So if you have graduated and you don't have a job yet and you want some help with that, we can definitely support you in that way. We utilize Handshake specifically. So if you haven't heard of Handshake before, it is a UCCS resource. Um, but as an alumni, you can apply for an alumni account. Uh, the student account will disappear, I think, about six months after you graduate. But most of that will be job and internship searching as well as connecting with employers. We also have grad school searching and support. So if you'd like to go back to get your master's degree, we can help you with writing personal statements as well as just doing some research on what kind of master's programs you'd like to get into. And lastly, if there are any pro staff out there who have students in need of professional attire for interviews or special events, we have Clyde's Closet, which is a free clothing closet for students to come by and get up to seven items a semester completely free. It is all business casual to business professional clothing and they do not have to return it at any time. So I think that's all I really had to talk about, Isaac. I hope I hit everything that you were looking for, but that one pager is there for you guys in case you ever need to contact us or need it for reference at any point. Yeah, uh, that was everything. Thank you so much. Uh, I personally, uh, when, when I discovered that the T.R.L. Price um, Career Center was able to actually outfit people, this is huge because we got to remember that we have a really diverse population of students. And when you, sometimes you just don't have the capability to get the clothing that you need to get that interview. 
Um, I personally love the thrift store, but sometimes that's, you know, like you can't do everything, mostly because I discovered a, I got this shirt at the thrift store, I discovered a stain on it today, so a little disappointed, but the Tiro Price community, or the, the Tiro Price uh, Career Center is going to be a prime thing. I would recommend, if you're faculty in this call, I recommend telling that to everyone. I learned it through faculty here, and that was huge for me. Um, and for me, I buy all my own stuff, but there's people who can't, so um, getting that information out there is going to be super awesome. Quick question, actually, uh, for you, Kenner. Um, can I donate stuff since I've gained a little weight since COVID? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You can donate at any point. We are open from Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Any time between then, you can drop off any sort of clothes. We're actually going to send out a spring cleaning email to all faculty for you guys to clean out your closets and bring some clothes so that I can sort through them and revamp our closet because we're always looking for some new stuff. We also have um, Clyde's Closet pop-up events around campus. You might see us at a couple of events. You can come and look at our uh, mobile closet and pick out anything you might like. So anytime, come on by. Awesome. Again, thank you so much. Uh, so next up, we've got uh, Nancy Mars. And then once Nancy Mars is done, we're going to open up it. Uh, we're going to open things up for questions specifically about life after UCCS for retirees and for students. Um, and then if we have a little bit extra time, we can open up uh, for some gen more general questions specifically about IT or if anyone has any more questions they'd like to ask to any of our amazing speakers today. So yeah, I'll hand it over to Nancy Mars. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Mars. I'm the HRIS Analyst for Human Resources here at UCCS. And um, if you don't mind, I have a little PowerPoint presentation. I thought I would just share my screen. It might be easier because there's so many links and everything. And I've had a few people ask, well, are you talking only retirees or are you talking anybody uh, separating from CU? And um, what I'm gonna talk about is focused on retirees, but we can, it's applicable to other people who are uh, separating from U CU. So let me go ahead and share my screen if that's okay. And um, I'll bring the PowerPoint presentation over, sorry. And um, this is, again, like I said, it's mostly on the retirement process, um, but I will focus on what the employee needs to do, what the um, employer, business partner, what CU needs to do, and maybe just a little demo and everything. And um, also, um, I will see if there's a way I can get this uh, presentation sent off to you, because it has a lot of links and stuff that are real easy to use. You can click on the link and go straight into whatever you need to do. So if you're an employee and you're retiring, and uh, the first thing we will always ask you to do is contact employee services. Number one, contact employee services. I put the phone numbers there, their website, even an email uh, address. The main thing we wanna know is if you're retiring, are you eligible to retire? Is your para, if you have para, your retirement accounts, insurance, all of that up to, snuff for, for retiring. So we want you to contact them first and foremost. The next thing, all you have to do is send a notification to your human resource liaison or your supervisor of your department. Just a letter, an email, or something of what your plans are. Um, even though you get the email, a lot of people sometimes retire, want to notify them six months ahead of time when they're going to uh, retire. However, just be aware that the department cannot create the sharewell ticket or the ticket until it's within 45 days of your last day of work. Because a lot of people will postpone that date. Um, they'll pick a date and then they'll go, oh, I wanna really do it a, a month later or two months later. And since if the process is already in place, it can be really hard to retract some of those accounts and, and reinitialize them and everything. Um, the other thing I have here is actual links. So. These links for what the employee does, the business partner, you can click on them. I won't click on them because I already have them because I, I like to cheat <laughs> and say, um, if you are separating, this is this one link. It will take you to our website and it just gives you what you do as an employee, what you do as a business partner, meaning the department. So as an employee, you will uh, have links on what you do for your final pay, all the steps that you need to understand your benefits, very important. And like I mentioned before, how you handle your para and all of that kind of stuff. 
um, as a empl employer or a business partner, we have steps for you to do. You have to create that ticket and I'll show you that in a little bit, how to create the ticket. Um, also, you have to enter that information in our human capital management, our system that the employee is leaving on a certain date. And then for both of them, we have an employee separation checklist, which is really wonderful. It is, um, and let me, I think I have a zoomed in version. It's a really nice checklist. It literally tells you what you need to do if you're separating. This is for all employees that are retiring or separating in any way. Um, the steps that you need to take. It also gives you the steps your supervisor should take. So you know that everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. And then as an employer, as the department, you will expect to get a notification from your employee that they are retiring. You will create the ticket and enter um, the termination information into our system. And that ticket will actually be sent to us, to um, HR. We will re review the ticket. We will also confirm the leave balances and make sure they're accurate. We'll probably contact the employee once again and say, have you contacted employee services to make sure you got that, your retirement accounts and your insurance all up to date. And if we think everything's complete, we will actually submit this ticket, meaning close it, which will actually then submit other tickets. It will trigger a ticket to IT at that point, telling them that this person is separating. In that ticket, um, those other departments don't see the actual notification email that you have sent as an employee. All they get is the ticket. And so it's real important that we say, oh no, this isn't a, a retiree, because this will allow you to keep your UCCS email address. Um, along with that, another email is sent to other departments, parking, finance, procurement. So they're aware that this employee is leaving either by retirement or other, other ways. And finally, we also send an exit survey to the employee at that point. It's an automated process. So the employee will actually get an exit survey. Um, we ask departments not to send a survey of their own because we don't want the employee inundated with exit surveys. However, if the employee really requests an exit survey or like an exit interview, the department is welcome to do that, but we would ask that they share that information with us at HR so we can track and trend that information. Um, otherwise, please defer them to, to employees to fill out this exit survey because it really does give us information on, on ways to improve or what we need to do, or if it's something really important, we will address it. And we also share the information with the department if it's something they do need to know. So in, in the end, it's really pretty simple. Whether you're retiring or whether you're uh, leaving in other ways, is you just send a notification of your separation um, to your supervisor. They create a ticket, and I'll show you this really quick. It's, it's in our, on our HR website. It's down here on our homepage, a ShareWell portal. And, um, and all they do is click in, log in to the ShareWell portal. And it may not let me because it's probably it's timed out at this time. <laughs> yep, it's already timed out. I'm sorry. And in the end, it's just a form, literally just a form that they fill out and uh, and they can uh, fill it out and put in the information of, of the name of the employee, how they're leaving and all of that, submit the form, and then we get the, we get the ShareWell ticket, we review it, and like I said, uh, send the email to the other departments and trigger tickets to IT about the uh, email address and all of that, and send an exit survey. And here's a link also to the exit survey so employees uh, you can see what the exit survey looks like if, if anyone's curious on what the questions are that we're asking. And that is about it, short and sweet. It's pretty simple process. It's really, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Uh, pretty simple process, especially if you follow the checklist. And I'll be glad to, like I said, provide uh, the slideshow so everybody then can click the links on their own. Awesome. 
Well, thank you so much. So much good information is in this bytes. Um, I saw a question in the chat um, that was, uh, uh, you know, where where is this going to be located afterwards? Um, you can go ahead and contact uh, the service desk. I'll see what I can do about getting an email sent out to campus. IT likes to be sparing with our emails that we send out to campus, um, so that people uh, so people so that people know when the wireless is down and not when a Zoom meeting is uh, available to view. Um, but this is gonna, this guy is going to be available on YouTube afterward. I don't know the link yet because we, we gotta we gotta download the recording and make it available. So. Usually these um, Zoom links take about an hour to fully get their stuff together. And then once we've got it, I download it and I can send it off. Um, so it could be a little bit before anyone can access this one. Um, I see a couple of questions that were unanswered. So let me go all the way back up to the top. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so JG, um, I think you're addressing this eventually, but wondering if email is kept after retiring and or other services offered when one leaves, thanks. That's probably gonna be a question for Nancy, right? Um, well, I do know for uh, definitely that the only after retiring, if you separate from UCCS um, by other means than retiring, you don't get to keep your UCCS email. Um, but if you retire, you do. Um, the other app, I'm, I'm thinking of other logins, I. Um, I'm going to assume maybe Zoom or any of those other applications, any of those, you won't be keeping any of access to any of that. That is correct. And I think uh, Joanna Bean can probably answer the question for alumni, which I, I believe we've kind of already answered. Um, if, if, if you'd like to add anything to it or, or if kind of what we've already said uh, covers everything. No, I think that covers it. Just keep up with your password and the storage capacity. Don't just yep. let it park off to the side or you won't have access to it. Cool. Awesome. All right, let's go back up and get some more questions in here. Um, what's the best way to, okay, so I think Travis had a question about what's the best way to verify we've done all of our stuff correctly. Travis, is that a um, question uh, related to the registrar? If you're still in the call. Oh, sorry, I forgot I could actually speak. Um, yeah, no, that got answered for me, so I'm all good. Awesome, beautiful. Okay, all right, we've got a bunch of other stuff. Um, so yeah, um, yep, if you're a retiree, you just naturally keep your email. Um, just to clarify, what benefits with the rec center do alum, so actually, great question. Uh, just to clarify, what benefits associated with the rec center do alumni maintain? So I dropped a link in the chat to the uh, rec center site that lists the alumni uh, membership. And I don't have it pulled up right in front of me, but it is a discounted membership for alumni. Cool, awesome. Probably should have read one more one more comment down, huh? Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. We've got some volunteering opportunities. Um, does the information pertaining to retirees also apply to employees who will no longer be employed? I believe Nancy covered the question. But uh, just to reiterate, uh, does the information pertaining to retirees also apply to employees who will no longer be employed at UCCS after the fiscal year? Uh, no, it, the, well, all the information that I gave, yes, on, on the process for separating is pretty much consistent across the board. Um, the only thing that's different for the retirees is uh, definitely like calling employee services to make sure that your accounts are eligible for retirement and also the uh, keeping of the UCCS email is only for retirees. Awesome. Um, and then I see another question from Travis, a great question. Travis is asking all the good questions today. Um, does our email slash login continue to get us access to the various research databases like psych info or will I need to join APA and buy access? So does, I actually don't know if there's anyone here does anyone know the answer to the question? I got that oh, answer I, as well. And uh, some of the resources are still available. You have to check the library uh, to determine which ones. Otherwise, now you're on your own. And I did drop a link in the chat at 220, which has a link to the Kramer Family Library alumni page that, as yeah. Travis said, lists the databases that you still have access to and those you don't. So if you go up to 220 in the chat, that link is up there. Okay, excellent, thank you. Uh, so I do see a question from uh, Brian. 
Uh, can you continue to take classes after graduation if you're not part of the grad program? I can actually, well, okay, so technically I shouldn't answer this for you. I'm gonna let the registrar answer it for you. But so I have a- answer that? I, I have a previous degree. So I have a previous degree from the CU school system. I actually started at UCCS about 10 years ago, transferred to CU Boulder, finished out my degree, and then came back, took one, one game design class and was like, I'm gonna be a computer scientist. Um, and I had been working on computers for a long time, just informally. Um, but yes, you can absolutely take classes afterward. Um, I'll say I have really appreciated coming back. I didn't realize that I missed UCCS until I was back here. So yeah. Yeah, I would just like to point out that uh, once you have graduated, you have to reapply. And so you, you don't have to come back degree seeking. There's a status called unclassified or non-degree seeking. Uh, there's an application for that on the admissions website. Awesome. Okay, let me, I'm going I'm to start checking to make sure that questions weren't answered in the chat before I say them out loud. Um, so, okay, cool. Can alumni make appointments to the Career Center virtually? Let's see. Yes, okay, cool. That was answered. Um, so yeah, there, there's a link in the chat. It's career.ucs.edu. Um, that's going to be your uh, Career Center link. Um, let's just separating from UCCS, will the email account. So, okay, so th this is kind of a question from for IT. So in terms, so the actual question is if separating from UCCS, whether you're graduating or whether you are um, uh, leaving, retirees are different, are kind of a different beast. Um, will the email account associated services be disconnected immediately after your final day of employment? I'm gonna add a little slash there and say final day of either uh, commencement or graduation. Kind of. So I have seen, uh, so in the real world, so like the, I'm sure there's an actual like time frame that is stated somewhere. In the real world, what I've seen is that I've seen people up to a month later retain those services and then lose them on the dot. So if you are graduating or you are separating and you have a bunch of stuff in your OneDrive, for instance, which by the way, please use OneDrive. Um, if you have a bunch of stuff in your OneDrive, you want to pull all of that off and stick it on an external hard drive or however you want to store that before you graduate. So you're going to, you're going to lose everything except email. So you're going to lose Teams, you're going to lose Zoom, you're going to lose most of those services um, with the exclusion of retirees who are going to retain a little bit more, but they're still not going to retain anything like the Office 365. So you are going to have to go buy Excel or whatever programs you want. Yeah. Um, for, for everyone who's in the call, did, did I answer that all, to, to everyone's spec? Is that kind of roughly correct? Yeah, and I just wanted to point out that degrees are not posted the day of commencement or the day after. Um, academic advisors in the grad school have a couple of weeks in order to validate and the, the conferrals, get that information to the Office of the Registrar so we can post it onto the student's record. That usually takes a few weeks. Um, and so until we've actually posted that conferral, to a graduate, the access remains the same. It's only once we post it, it overnight, oh, wait a minute, you know, it's gone. It was there yesterday. Well, yes, because we, we posted the degree and then it was, that information was consumed by OIT. So again, listen to Isaac or you will lose access to some of your resources. So that, that is a super good point. I've seen, I've just seen a couple of tickets come through. Uh, it's, it's not common, but I've seen a couple of tickets come through where, you know, if you're an engineering student and you have stored your code on OneDrive, which please don't do that, please put your code on GitHub. Um, so for any of the engineering students listening to me right now, please put your code on GitHub. If you have code or documents or essays that you've got written, um, Microsoft does what's called a soft deletion. So after 30 days, when your account is, is, has, been, has been removed access on the services like OneDrive and Word and stuff like that, after 30 days, there is a, um, or after, rather I should say, after Tracy's time period where you're deprovisioned in our system, you have about 30 days to pull your stuff off. After that, Microsoft does what's called a hard deletion, which means they actually wipe the data from their server and you're not getting it back. Um, not without reversing the laws of entropy or figuring out how to go back in time. Um, so my recommendation is if you have stuff like that, you always wanna pull that off. Data, OIT takes data preservation super seriously. 
So um, super highly recommend it. If you don't know how to do it, please feel free to contact the service desk. That's what we're here for. We are here to make sure that you're covered with all your tech needs. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see if we've got other questions. Amazing, cool, beautiful. Got such a great chat going on. Thank you guys. Awesome. Um, so uh, if anyone wants to jump on and ask a question, feel free. Um, since we've got about 10 minutes, um, are the alumni able to use a UCCS virtual desktop? No. So once you're an alumni, you lose access to anything Microsoft 365 with the exclusion of Outlook. So you might be able to use it for maybe 30 days. After that, uh, the, the support gets spotty. Um, we've, we have had, you know, we've, we have recovered people's data and emails before, but stuff that um, like university resources, like the virtual labs, which by the way, is a fantastic resource, um, stuff like that, gone. So, and there's, unless there's a very specific use case, IT is just from a security standpoint, usually does not reinstate those. So, all right. Great question. Thank you. Thank you for plugging virtual desktop for me. It's super cool. If you're ever having problems with the VPN, virtual desktop is a super awesome workaround. And is there a way to save Canvas shells as an instructor? That is an excellent question for the FRC. I can't answer that. So if someone from the FRC is, oh, actually I see, I'm not gonna sign anyone up for work, but if somebody wants to jump on and answer that, feel free, but that's gonna be a question for the FRC. Anything Canvas, FRC. They, they are 100% your go-to. If you ask a question to IT about Canvas, we're going to refer you immediately. Um, so yeah, yep, FRC is super great. Thank you for the question. Where <laughs> are we allowed? Are we allowed to wear the decorator of UCCS stole to the ceremony? And you can only wear one tassel. Beautiful. Oh, all right, cool. Jackie is there. Um, okay, simple question. Are we allowed to wear the decorative UCCS uh, stole to the ceremony? Um, I do not know the answer to that. To my knowledge, sorry, I turned off my camera. Um, to my knowledge, uh, this was a question for the UCCS bookstore. Uh, I, uh, mm, yeah, let's go with that. Um, but I think that you can wear any stole you like. The tassel is what is important to, for the conferral and the transition, uh, Tracy, I don't, I think if, and they can wear whatever stoles uh, are in their student organizations and their military stoles and, you know, things like that. I think that's okay. Yeah. That is correct. Um, we ask that it be UCCS organization, club, college affiliated. Uh, you can't make your own. We would ask that. So um, it is a ceremony meant to recognize and honor many, many students. And so we need to be respectful. Yeah, we'll have many people, many eyes on you, so you yeah. won't get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. Okay, so if there aren't any other questions, we can always end it early. If some, if people would like to stay on and ask some more general questions, we can. I can create kind of a hard threshold here so we're not really recording those because the whole point of this Bytes is to focus purely on life after UCCS. Um, so if anyone wants to stick around, please, please feel free to throw questions in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna cut the recording now. Oh, actually, hang on, we, we, uh, do retirees have access to library services? Um, from Linda Button. Okay. So uh, that, that question was answered a little bit earlier in the chat. Um, I don't know off of the top of my head, but there is a link, uh, it's the KFO link. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give a quick copy and paste real quick. Something Joanna Bean posted. So I think the question was about retirees. I, I answered about alumni. Uh, uh, th there we go, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, Shad's here, perfect. Thank you, Shad. Amazing, okay, cool. All right, sweet. Well, um, we'll go ahead and open it up um, to some more general IT questions. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna cut the recording here. So we'll stop the recording.